On behalf of Valor Canada, welcome to the old Western Front. We're standing here in Belgium at a monument now known as Vancouver Corner. Only a few miles, just five miles from the city of Ypres. Canadian soldiers first arrived here in the Ypres salience in January of 1915, and numbers begin to increase. But as they come in the line, they must have realized the importance of the area. Why? Ypres is the last city left in Belgium, not in German hands. The rest of Belgium is already known as New Germany. They have no intention of giving it back. And if they can capture Ypres, basically it's all over. That nation will cease to exist permanently. So what do the Germans do? They look to their top scientists. How can we break the stalemate of trench warfare? Artillery, bayonets, hand grenades, yes. How about the use of poison gas? And a scientist called Fritz Haber, born Jewish, who converts to Christianity, presents an idea. Chlorine gas can be used to disinfect water. It can be used to poison rats. Why not use it to poison soldiers? So we have to imagine, 22nd of April, 1915, Canadian soldiers off to my right, an ordinary day. Off to my left, French soldiers. And nothing really happens much during the day. Quite a quiet day. What are the Germans waiting for? The wind in the correct direction. The wind here normally blows from west to east towards the Germans. But at night, it changes. And at five o'clock that evening, it's exactly what happens. The gas is now ready because the wind is now blowing towards the French and the British and the Canadians. The gas is released. Eight and a half thousand cylinders opened up. The gas run out through pipes. It's heavier than air and it runs towards the French to start with. French are actually from North Africa. There are Algerians and the Moroccans. They've never faced gas. They have no gas protection whatsoever. There are no gas masks. Nobody thought the enemy would use it. They panic, not surprisingly. Some try running, sadly for them, in the gas cloud. They start dying in enormous numbers. Others simply are unable to fight back. The Germans follow up with very simple gas masks. There's now a gap in the line of over 1,500 yards. Through that gap comes the German soldiers. And into that gap is pushed the available Canadian soldiers. And they manage, despite all the problems, to hold the enemy off. Quite early on, they realize it's possible to actually survive in the gas cloud by using something as simple as this, a handkerchief. Not dry, but wet. Liquids variously water or urine. Later on, they'll come up with a better system using chemicals that will filter the gas out. But you've got to imagine, for the next few days, Canadian soldiers with no gas masks are fighting a battle with a sock soaked in chemicals tied over their mouth and nose. What then happens is a battle that will go on to the 5th of May. Casualties mount rapidly, especially on the 24th of April. And by the end of the battle, although the gas has reached deeper, civilians die from it, casualties are enormous, the Canadians hold the line. They stop that breach and the fall of Ypres. What does that mean, though, in terms of casualties? 6,000, 6 to 8,000 Canadians killed, wounded and missing. Probably 2,000 dead. Many of them probably still here, battlefield burials. So why is this monument here? Well, it's here to remember the fallen Canadian soldiers. And it's a curiosity in a strange way, because obviously the monument is post-war. Post-war, there was a competition, the best statue to remember the fallen Canadians. The one that wins the competition is the monument that we all know at Vimy Ridge. This is the runner-up, the brooding soldier. And here he is, resting with a helmet over his eyes, hands on the butt of his rifle. So why is it upside down? Why would it be resting on his boot? When would you do that? The answer is only one occasion. 
This is a military funeral. This is remembering the fallen Canadian soldiers of the Ypres salience, joining 400,000 Allied soldiers killed, wounded and missing in this very small area of ground we're looking at now.